huge supporter of launch. I cannot say enough good things about it. Um, when we get a little towards the end, I'm going to tell you a little bit specifically about why I like launch in particular. Um, but I, I want to start um, with just some things that I can tell you to kind of help you prepare for it, get excited for it, things you can be thinking about while you're at home. Um, and also, um, you know, kudos to you for being here and for investing in yourself or if you're a parent investing in your child. Um, you know, this entertainment industry of ours is a weird and wild place to begin with. And I think that there is nothing better. I think it is the greatest industry in the world. Um, I think now more than ever, people are looking to the arts and entertainment um, in new and exciting ways. Um, so the fact that, you know, you're taking this leap of faith in yourself or your child or your family or whoever, like right now we have nothing but time, but time is also the greatest commodity and there's all sorts of things fighting for your time right now. So like awesome for you for, for being here to begin with. Um, so I'm gonna start by introducing me, just so you know who I am, why I have any right to be here talking to you. Um, and then I'm gonna go in to a little bit of um, the types of people that you're going to meet, the types of industry people you're going to meet. Uh, I'm going to talk with you uh, a little bit about how to prep for the meet and greet portion of launch um, because I think it's super valuable and um, I don't think everyone always knows like what to do or how to do it. Um, so I want to try and give you some tips on that uh, and then I'll talk a little bit about launch and then if we have time we'll go into Q&A. Um, so like Steve said, uh, my name is Katie Proctor. I am a casting director uh, at a production company in New York City called RWS Entertainment Group. What does that mean? Cool. So as a production company, we don't do any um, projects for ourselves or shows for ourselves. We're hired by clients. Um, I'm in-house casting for us. So we do shows um, everywhere from cruise ships to theme parks to corporate events and industrials and sort shows and all sorts of that. Um, and we also own Bender Casting, which is one of the top Broadway and commercial offices in New York. Um, so they cast the Lion King worldwide, amongst other amazing things. Um, and they do lots of commercials and voiceovers. So as you watch TV and you know, you're seeing these things and you're like, well, how do I get involved in commercials? I've always wanted to do voiceovers. Those are things that, that we cast for. So I'm just the tip of the iceberg of the type of person you're going to meet um, and the things you're going to be exposed to, um, but even just as one person, you're already going to be able to audition for everything from cruise ships and theme parks to Broadway and commercials and voiceovers. So keep keep all that in mind. And if you're saying to yourself, I don't really understand what casting means, good news, you're in the right place because that's what we're going to get into. Um, so I'm just going to scan to my notes here for one second. Um, so just so you know kind of how I got involved and why I love doing these kinds of things, um, it's because I started my life as a performer. Uh, I always knew I wanted to do musical theater. Um, I, I majored in it, it at NYU back when they had a program called CAP 21. Uh, and I was a musical theater performer for a very long time before coming over to this side of things. Um, so I'm very passionate about um, the educational side, and I think that um, for you guys to know, anyone on this side of the business um, loves a smart actor. And when I say a smart actor, I don't necessarily mean book smart, but I mean someone who knows about the industry, has learned what it means when someone says they're an agent, knows what it means if we say, have you read the breakdown? And yes, I'm going to talk about these things. But these are things we look for. These are, we look to see, have you been doing your homework? Do you know that the types of people you're going to meet in the industry? Um, so I get super into it and super passionate about it. Um, but I, I think that that the people who really thrive this industry are the people who love it, are the people who really want to know about it and, and how to learn about it. Um, so I want to get into kind of the types of people that you're going to meet um, on the industry side of things. Um, and he, let me start by saying that it takes a lot of people 
to make this industry run. So, you know, when you're watching TV or you're looking at magazines or you're thinking about all of that, you know, yes, yes you're seeing the actor or you're seeing the model or you're seeing the singer. Um, but there's so many people behind the scenes who were invested in that person or helped kind of get them where they are. Right. So anyone from an agent who was representing them to the casting director who got them the audition to the producer who put out the job. Right. There's a million different people on this side of things who help make the industry run. So when you get to launch, you're going to be exposed to everyone from, uh, you know, music producers to people in the model industry with, with print and, and high fashion, to dance agents, um, to uh, agents and managers and casting directors. And one of the cool things about this industry and one of the cool things about launch is that, you know, you don't have to just be uh, an actor in commercials. You don't have to just be uh, a, a dancer who wants to be on a cruise ship. You know, you could be a dancer who thinks they want to be on a cruise ship. Oh, and guess what? In commercials, they also cast a lot of dancers. So maybe you end up doing commercials or, oh, I, you know, I, I love to act. I had no idea. I also love to model. Right. So th at launch, you're going to get an opportunity to do all sorts of these things. You're also going to be exposed to all sorts of these people. Right. So I could talk forever about the kinds of people you're going to meet. Um, but to help hone in our time and kind of focus it for you a little bit, I'm going to specifically talk to you right now about agents and managers and casting directors, okay? And A, I wanna talk about this because surprise, I'm a casting director, right? So I kinda know a little bit about what casting directors do and how they function. Um, but I also wanna talk about agents and managers because agents and managers and casting directors work together, okay? So our functions are very different and how we can help you is very different, but we kind of work together. We, I like to say we play in the same sandbox. So it's good to know how the different sides function independently, to know then how they work together. And when you get to launch and you're like, cool, that person's an agent. Ooh, that person's a casting director. You'll know how to talk to them in different ways, right? But maybe you'll realize that like this agent and this casting director like to work together, right? So these are the kinds of things that can help you be a really smart actor, like I was going back to at the beginning. Okay, so let's start with an agent, okay? So in the agent's main job is to find actors for their roster, okay? You'll hear me say this word quite often, okay? And there's all sorts of different agents out there. So there's, you know, acting agents and commercial agents and dance agents, all right? I'm just talking in broad terms when we say agent, okay? So an agent's job is to find people who they like for their roster, okay? This roster is the number of people that they have on file in their office that they send out for auditions, okay? And every agency is going to be a different size, anywhere, I don't know, 20 to 200, who knows? But the, it's the agent's job to know who is in their roster, to find people if they're, you know, looking for new people to be sending out. It is then their job to send these people out on auditions, okay? So an agent will help you actually find auditions and it's their job to help get you in the door to get into auditions, okay? Then fast forward to once you've booked the job, yay, hooray, it is then also the agent's job to help negotiate that contract for you. So basically you don't feel alone in figuring all this out. Side note, when I was an actor, I never had an agent. So this is not to say you have to have an agent to be a successful actor, okay? I just want everyone to know about the different parts of the industry. Cool. So agent, right, has worked essentially for free, 
this whole time. They have found you, they've put you on their roster, they've sent you out on auditions, they've helped you negotiate that callback, they've then negotiated the contract with you, amazing. They've done all of that for zero money, okay? Agents and managers do not get paid by you until you book a job, okay? Managers are like agents, in that they will also have a roster of people. They will send you out on auditions. They will, you know, help negotiate the contract, all of those things. But a manager, think about the word manage, right? So they're really helping you, in theory, manage your career. So they, are, in theory, are a lot more invested in you than just sending you out on auditions. Okay, so they could be doing everything from consulting with you about your wardrobe and your hairstyle to helping you find acting classes, to working with you on your callback material, um, to helping you set up networking events. Okay, you've, you've probably heard you guys that people like to work with people that they know. Really what they're saying is they like to work with people they like to work with right? Think about your life. Think about people you like to work with. Wouldn't it be better for you to work with people you already know, that you already like, that you know how they work in a room, you know they're a pleasure to be around, right? So that's that whole adage of, oh, this industry is who you know. Well, this industry really is about people liking to work with who they like to work with, okay? So this manager over here probably is also helping you to network right, is also helping you be a person that people know. So in theory, once you book that contract, right, and you get that job, the agent will probably take about 10% of that paycheck. If you have a manager, they'll probably take about 15% of that paycheck. And that is because they have not been paid until you have booked that job, okay? So yes, that might sound like, oh my God, they're taking so much of my money. Well. Think about maybe how long they've worked for free, right? This is how they work. They are a commission-based type of person who has invested in you and has been sending you out and probably talking you up and trying to get you in rooms and helping you for however long before you ever even get a paycheck, right? So when you do book it, they will get 10 or 15, usually 10 or 15%. Is that clear? Can I just see like a nodding of heads? Cool. Okay, let me skip over now a little bit to casting directors, okay? So a casting director's job is to be the one essentially taking care of the audition portion. So remember how I said the agent's job is to get you the audition, right? So the casting director, their job is the audition, is... 90% of their job is the audition. So it's everything from setting up the audition to putting out what we call a breakdown. I'll talk a little bit about that, what, what that means. I won't get crazy with it though. Um, then getting submissions from the agents, deciding who they want to see for the audition, calling those people in, holding the audition, deciding who gets the callback, holding the callback right? And then either deciding who books the job or working with the producer or the director or whoever of the millions of other people are involved in the project to help decide who then gets the job, right? So remember how I said at the beginning that we're all kind of playing in the same sandbox and we're all kind of in the same thing, but like not really? Cool. So here's the thing is that the casting director We'll put out a breakdown. So let's say I'm, I don't cast movies, but let's say I was casting a movie and I was casting a family and I needed a mom and a dad and a girl and a boy, right? What I would do is literally, I would write what's called a breakdown. And in that breakdown that I would put out online, it would list what is the project? When is it filming? How much does it pay? What are the roles I'm looking for, right? What are the ages? What are the heights? Whatever specifics I'm looking for. I then put that breakdown, oh, when is the audition, right? And put this out, you don't need to know where, but I put this out into the world and it goes out to agents, right? And managers. 
agents and managers then look through all of the, through that breakdown and any of the other breakdowns they got that day and they go, cool, who do I have in my roster? Remember that word? Who do I have in my roster who could potentially play the mom, the dad, the girl, the boy? So, like I said, it's their job to know who's on their roster, right? It's because they're getting, I don't know, 100 breakdowns a day, 50 breakdowns a day, who knows? They then have to very quickly be able to look at that breakdown and go, ah, so-and-so, Steve is perfect for the dad, Lynn is perfect for the mom, great, right? Hooray, you guys made the cut, good job. They then send that back to the casting director and say, here's Steve. I think Steve is perfect for the dad. I, as the casting director, then have to look at Steve and look at his headshot and his resume. Look at that smoldering look. Perfect. Book the job. And I then decide if Steve gets the appointment. So do you see how the casting director and the agent or manager kind of work together? So we're kind of doing different things, but again, this is why something like launch is so great is because, you know, if Steve is a, can, is someone going through launch, right? And I'm sitting at one of the VIP tables in the room and I have, uh, you know, a legit agent next to me and a commercial agent on my other side. And they're both going, ah, oh, well, I want to work with Steve because I could send Steve out as a parent for a movie and this commercial agent is going, oh, I could send Steve out as, you know, we're just, we're saying dad. So I could send Steve out for a dad in commercials. As a casting director, I'm going, well, cool. I could bring Steve in for any number of things that I'm casting, right? And so you're gonna get exposed to all these people who are going to have different needs in the industry but we're all gonna kind of be playing together at the end of the day. So that's kind of the difference between the agents, the managers, and the casting directors, and how we all do different things, but we all work together. And, you know, like I said, that's, that's the cool thing is that you don't have to just do one, you don't have to just do another, but, you know, you could have the same response from a music producer who's like, oh, I want to, you know, bring them in and record and do whatever. Well, I also work with singers. So maybe I want to go over to that music producer and be like, hey, who do you have that's really great? I'm working on this project. And again, we might be networking, right? Because again, it's all about who you know, it's all about who we like to work with. I love my launch family. I love the other industry people that they bring in. These are people that we become friends with, right? And that we trust. That's another great thing about launch, you guys, is everyone who's coming in is someone you can trust and someone who's got a good reputation in this industry and who actually like does things for performers and can help you ultimately, right? But I, you know, there are people there who I make sure to meet with every time I'm there outside of what you're seeing in the room because I'm like, cool, I'm working on this project. Like, I love the people you usually have on your roster. Who might you have that's right for this project? And those are the kinds of things that maybe you guys don't see, but is so important for everything that's happening, right? Or maybe, you know, we get together and we're like, oh, do you remember that person from the last time at launch? Oh, I sent them out on this thing and they booked it and now they're doing this. And do you think you could see them in six months when they're available, right? So it's, it's all about relationships, networking. I sound like a broken record, but I'm just gonna keep saying it because it's so, so, so important, yeah? Um, I wrote this note for myself and I'm glad that I did because it's it's something I really believe and, and I, I think it's easier to say um, than do. But guys, remember that this career is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And again, investing time in yourself, love that you're here and you're doing it. You know, I hope that you're getting excited about launch and I hope that you know that you can take this time right now while you're home to be doing your homework and to be preparing and to be thinking about all the things coming up and to you know know that launch will be the next step. It's not the end step, right? It's the next step. 
and to be thinking about all the things you can work on and, and all the things you can be doing. Um, so very quickly about the meet and greet. Um, you're, go you're, you're probably going to talk more with your, your mother agent or whoever you're, you're working with specifically about these things, but you're going to want a headshot. You're going to want a resume, okay? And a headshot, you guys, is you on your best day, okay? So this is not the world's most glamorous image. If, you know, you are super edgy, you're probably not necessarily going to want a headshot that's cutesy. Or if you're cutesy, you're not going to want a headshot that's glamorous, right? We want to see you on your best day. And the headshot we see of you, that's who we want to see walk through a door at an audition. Okay, I'm not going to delve too deep into that, but I'm, I'm, I feel very strongly about that one. Um, with your resume, I know some of you are probably saying, I don't have anything to put on a resume. How do I do that? Well, you have a name, you have contact information, you have height, you have air, you know, hair color, eye color. These are all great things to be putting on the top of a resume. If you're under 18, put your age. If you are not under 18, please do not put your age. Also, don't put your home address. You don't want me showing up to your home. Maybe you do. I hope you don't though, right? Um, if you have any kind of credits, whether it's from your school or camp or your church, or your community theater, or your regional theater, or you know whatever extent you have. These are all things you can put on, on your resume as credits, okay? But you wanna make sure it's all on one page. You don't wanna be going over into two pages. And you really wanna make sure that you show up to the meet and greet with a headshot and a resume. I cannot stress this enough. The number of people who end up coming to meet and greet without one, I didn't know I needed it. How do I get in touch with you? How do I find out about you? How do I learn anything about you, right? Like these are super, super, super important things to have on there. Um, also with the meet and greet, you're not gonna have all the time in the world, right? This is not the time to give us your life story, but this is also not the time to walk up to the table and be like, hi, I like to sing and dance cool, we assume you like to sing and dance, right? Or we assume you like to act or that you like to model. What, a, again, we are in the market of working with people. We want to work with people we want to work with, right? Again, broken record, but I'm gonna keep saying it. So this is a chance for you to get in front of people and to let us know a little bit about you. What's something really cool about yourself? Do you, you know, are you a spelling bee champion? Do you love to bake? Do you grow up with 17 dogs? I don't know, but like get us engaged in you. Get us, make us want to know more about you, right? These are the things we're looking for. Where do you live, right? Like how, why, and a lot of people will ask, well, why do you, why do you wanna be here? Why, why do you wanna be in acting? And, you know, some people will say, because I want to be a star. Cool, I get that. But, like, what is it that made you hungry for this? Like, why do you want to be involved? Why do you want to be invested? Are you taking classes? Do you have goals? Are you things you, you know, you want to be doing? Um, and since time is running really, really short, and I have to fast forward through my notes because I've been talking for so long, um, I, first of all, want to give a shout out to Lynn and Steve for making this happen. And you guys, they are working so hard behind the scenes to make sure that launch um, now and forever is is super successful and super awesome for you. So even if you're not seeing it, even if you're like, but nothing's happening right now, they are working so hard to make sure that, that this is awesome. So know that. Um, it's a really nice intimate event. You know, there's never going to be more than about 200 people, which for this kind of event is is small. Um, which is great, which gives all of you a chance to really showcase yourselves, gives us a chance to really get to know you. Um, it's not a competition. It's, you know, it really is 
educational. It really is a time that there's going to be classes and showcases and events and, you know, seminars and things that you can learn. And there's always more to learn in this industry. Um, so, you know, I hope that you're taking this time now to invest in yourself. But when you get to launch, I hope you go to all the classes and the seminars and the things and, you know, you, you learn as much as you can and soak it all in. Um, because the, the industry people that are coming, like me, we really care. We care about launch. We care about this industry. I care so deeply and passionately about this industry, in case you cannot tell. And everyone who's there is, is the same. And we all teach because we love it. You know, we, we want to be giving our time. We want to be giving our knowledge. That's it. I didn't get cut off. Hooray.